I'm joined now by Dr. Fyodor Ernov from UC Berkeley, who just wrapped up this morning's keynote address. Dr. Ernov, thanks so much for being with us. How do you think it went? Give us an overview. Um, the introduction by the president of the society gave me goosebumps. <laughs> you know, the best sense of the word, the unmet medical need for kidney disease in this country is huge. It's a thrill to share with colleagues substantial advances in our being able to work with the human genome, change it, and thus get to the basis of conditions that affect 40 million Americans. I spoke with a number of physicians who treat kidney disease after the talk. More or less every single one of them asked me how they can work with this technology to advance and improve their um, clinical practice. So I guess the short answer to your question, how it went, well. Very well, it sounds like. And specifically, it was on gene editing and how that relates to medical breakthroughs? For the longest time, people who work with DNA were like astronomers. We can look at the stars and we can catalog them. We can build better telescopes to see more of them. So over the past 30 years, we've really expanded our ability to read the DNA completely, and this has now been applied to hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people. So you have this enormous building's worth of information, now what? So in contrast to astronomers, us gene editors can actually touch the stars, namely we can, we can, we can get to the genes. And there are in fact two complementary ways in which we do that, both of which relate to uh, the healthcare challenge of kidney disease. So the first one is quite simply, since it's gene editing, we can actually directly repair mutations that cause kidney disease. It's important to note that it's easier to do that in some organs than others. The liver, for example, is highly editable, or the hematopoietic system is. The kidney is tougher, but I think it's clear that the, the technologies have all ripened where we can seriously advance the concept of gene repair for kidney disease to first in human clinical trials in the next, let's say, five years. But even in the bigger picture, and uh, taking a step back from genetic diseases of the kidney, which are less common than chronic kidney conditions that affect 30 million plus, gene editing allows us an unprecedented opportunity to take this mountain of genetic data I spoke about and filter through it using a unique kind of um, sieve, if you will. One that uses cells that are engineered to act and be like kidney cells, and then identify those that, as a consequence of being gene edited, CRISPR'd, have now acquired disease protective characteristics. Once we find that cell, we can ask the regulation or the gene engineering of which gene gives the cell that benefit. And that immediately charts a path to a first in human experimental therapeutic. Thrilling times. Wow, incredible. Why is it so important for you to be giving this lecture to this specific audience, the ASN audience? Human endeavor historically has been siloed. You know, somebody discovered aluminum and then just sat there until somebody invented the plane. But then it took somebody to say to the aluminum guy, go talk to the plane guy, because you can build planes that are scalable. So I am deeply grateful to the ASN for the honor of giving the plenary, because I cannot wait for, you know, for the graham cracker and the marshmallow to meet in a s'more. There really is that potential for a one plus one equals seven synergy. And an opportunity to share with the clinicians and folks who address kidney disease how much we can do is frankly a unique one as far as forging those kinds of partnerships that will advance care. All right, well, Dr. Erdogan, thank you so much for being here with us today. Congratulations on a successful address. Thank, thank you so much. much. Thank you for your time.